for um, chapter three, go ahead and take a look at the questions for chapter three. There's 10 of them, I believe. Okay, so Harold files a lawsuit against Allied Company in an Oregon court with limited jurisdiction. A court of limited jurisdiction and a court of general jurisdiction differ in the subject matter or types of cases that the court can decide. Okay, so different types of court cases are held in different courts. Um, a dispute arises between Calvin and Patrick who own a business together. They have tried but are unable to work it out between themselves, but they value their business relationship and want to be able to continue to work together. How should they go about settling their dispute? Since they've already tried negotiation, we want to go ahead and try mediation. Um, so we'll do a mediation in that case. <clears throat> Serena and Cliff are getting a divorce. Cliff is suing Serena for custody of their two young sons. The case is going to be heard in a court of limited jurisdiction. It's not going to be a federal or appellate court, so really your choices are general or limited. Number four, um, Brad, a homeowner, files a lawsuit against Ed, his construction contractor. Prior to trial, they meet their attorneys to try to resolve their dispute before going to trial. This proceeding is known as a negotiation, okay? So it's kind of what happens before um, they go to trial. In fact, my court case that I had had a negotiation phase as well. Ricky loses his breach of contract against Glenn in an Oklahoma State trial court. Ricky appeals to the State Court of Appeals. Losing again, he files his next appeal with, this is going to go to the State Supreme Court, um, none of the U.S. Um, Supreme Court. That wouldn't fit. It's too big. All right. In the lawsuit against Sharon Fruit Distributors, the plaintiff's uh, lawyer ac requests access to the company's president's laptop in order to obtain information about the files stored there, who created them, when they were created, and when they were accessed. The information is actually metadata. I think about it as your camera. Your camera stores metadata, stores like the lens you use, um, your aperture, your focal length. Um, shutter speed, all that kind of stuff. I'm re repeating myself, but you know, at the time, the date that you took it, some geocode it, that's all metadata. Um, Playtime Inc. manufactures the Whirly Gig, a toy that the company discovers can cause serious harm before anyone is injured, and a pediatric nurse who has not purchased a Whirly Gig files a suit against Playtime in seeking to have the suit dismissed. Playtime's best argument is that Anne does not have. A standing to sue. She didn't purchase it. She has no damages that she felt, um, so she really doesn't have a standing to sue. Um, number eight, Transpac Corp and Alliance Inc. agree to a contract that includes a binding arbitration clause. After a dispute arises between the parties, the case goes to arbitration. The arbitrator finds in Transpac's favor, Alliance files a lawsuit alleging that the award should not be enforced because the arbitrator made a minor error in her findings of fact. The court will likely A, do none of these actions because binding arbitration is binding. Um, so there really is no appeal process to it. It's binding. One of the reasons why people don't like binding arbitration, because you can't appeal it. Bob is a resident of Ohio and borrows $50,000 from a bank in New York. When he defaults on the loan, the bank sues Bob in federal court. The federal court has no jurisdiction, because it should be done in a state court, because it happened in Ohio. Um, or New York. Those would be the two places it could possibly be. Um, Courtney files a lawsuit against Albert. If her case is like most lawsuits filed in this country, it will be settled. Most lawsuits don't even go to court, which is probably a good thing because that's pretty nerve-wracking. So that's chapter three in a nutshell, the courts and alternative dispute resolution. Um, chapter four is constitutional law, and we've got a couple of analyzed legal reasoning for this one. And start the assignment. Let's see what we got here. Congress passes a law that requires straight mud flaps be installed on trucks 
18 wheelers tractor trailers by the manufacturers to minimize water, mud, snow, and ice from being thrown into the windshields of nearby vehicles due to a recent increase in accidents caused by snow and ice being thrown into the windshield of passing vehicles. The state of Colorado passes a law that requires a contoured mud flap on any trucks and tractor trailers that drive on Colorado roads. Texas Trucking Company, Inc. is a trucking company with a fleet of 100 trucks that operates out of Amarillo, Texas, and regularly makes deliveries to Colorado. It will cost the company more than $100,000 to purchase and install new mud flaps on its trucks and tractor trailers. It files suits against the state of Colorado in a Colorado federal court claiming the state law violates the Commerce Clause. The court will likely rule that Colorado has violated the Commerce Clause. So... Anytime um, that you have interstate business um, really needs to be similar. That's what the Commerce Clause is all about. It's a uniform commercial clause where any type of sales transaction or um, transaction like that that happens across state lines will be kind of regulated so that you have the same experience regardless of where you go. Um, makes it easier. If there's rules in every different state, it would be very difficult. A Delaware law allowed electrical contractors doing state-funded work to pay lower wages to apprentices if the contractors had registered their apprenticeship programs in the state. Out-of-state contractors, however, could not pay the lower rate unless they maintained a permanent office in Delaware. If an out-of-state contractor files suit claiming that Delaware's regulations discriminate against out-of-state contractors, the federal court will probably, um, in this case, find that the law is... Um, I think in violation of the Dormant um, Commerce Clause, if I'm not mistaken, it's not valid. Um, and I think it's this one because um, what happens is it's it's a kind of an anti-competitive law. So um, you should be able to have competition in, in a free market society. That's what we try to um, promote. So when you have out of something like a penalty for out-of-state contractors, um, then the Commerce Clause is going to play a fact that they really want that competition to be there and um, it's really not playing fairly, I guess. Ralph Young was a commercial tour boat operator on the northern coast of Kauai, Hawaii. He was licensed by the state of Hawaii to operate his boat in Hanalei Bay. The U.S. Department of Transportation and the U.S. Coast Guard had specifically granted Young an unrestricted license to operate his boats in Hanalei Bay. Hawaii subsequently passed a law that banned all commercial use of Hanalei Bay. The state refused to renew Young's state license, and he was not allowed to operate his vessel under his federal license. Young filed a lawsuit against the state alleging that the state law had prohibited him from operating his boat, conflicted with the federal law that authorized him to do so. The court probably found that the state law was, in this case, unconstitutional, unconstitutional um, under the Supremacy Clause because the federal law supersedes um, the state law, especially when it's in favor of the person and not the state. So it's usually where, you know, if it was... If the state law was like more favorable for the individual, then that would actually, in most cases, stand. Um, but when the federal law is more favorable for the individual, then the federal law stands. We'll find that a little bit more in human resource law. So for right now, just know that the federal law stands above um, state law, with the exception of some human resource laws, <laughs> which we'll talk about later. Not confusing at all. So when you think about this, every situation is a little bit different. You know, there's general rules of thumb, but anytime you take something to court, it's a little bit of um, a toss-up to see what's going to happen. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about those chapter assignments and what some of those answers are. I'll talk to you later.